everyone? I'm Nick Ortolani. Let's get to know me a little bit. I work with kids. Yep, I can pass a bat round check despite looking like I direct plot heavy porn. That's what my face says to the world around me. I work at a daycare next to an incredibly busy gun range. It's fun. Uh, I got to speak Spanish at my job, and, and I learn Spanish in public school where you learn this super fancy aristocratic Spain Spanish from like 500 years ago that I speak mwah, terribly. Like, what do I sound like to native speakers of the language? Do I just sound like an old, incoherent British man? Like if someone were to come up to me and just be like, ah, yes, excuse of me, Mr. Man, they call me Jeffrey. Now, I'm doing okay, okay. Now, right now, please be telling of me how much far does my walking need from here to bathroom. I am goodbye. Like, you know, chit chat. <laughs> Uh, I'm originally from my parents, but I grew up in Salem, Massachusetts, and uh, if, you, if you don't know Salem, it's this little town in Northeast Mass that has a ghost story-based economy. It's true. It's world famous for the Salem witch trials. On the record, I was always against them, and so when, when I meet people and I tell them I'm from Salem, they always have the same reaction. They're always just like, oh, you're from Salem, huh? Witch trials. <laughs> witch trials. And that is so rude because you never meet anyone else and then immediately acknowledge the worst part of their hometown's history. Like, you don't meet someone and you're just like, oh, you're from Oklahoma City, huh? Timothy McVeigh, huh? Timmy McVeigh. I was in New York City recently, just taken in the smells, and uh, I, I, love, I love big cities. I love being in big cities. I love all the automated, like, robot voices you hear in big cities. Like, my favorite is the walk sign guy. When you go up to a crosswalk and you hit a button and it just goes, wait. And if you're like me, you never hit that button just once. You're like, wait, whoa, whoa, wait, wait. You, like, remix your life. Have some fun with it. So I'm riding the train in New York, and this announcement comes on over the PA. It's one of those voices that I love so much, and it goes, Because of construction. The Brooklyn C Line train will run on the D Line. And that's a great New York moment. That can only happen in that city. Because anywhere else in the country, everyone else's announcement is just because of construction. Uh, walk. I went to Chuck E. Cheese recently. Went to Chuck E. Cheese. Uh, like I said, I work with kids. I wasn't just like hanging out. I wasn't I wasn't like I could go for pizza, but I want it to smell like your feet could fart. Uh I, I love Chuck E. Cheese. It has to be the most upsetting place you can take a child for a party, right? It's got these like characters, this atmosphere, this narrative that it forces on you. If you're like paying attention, that narrative's kind of messed up. Like, first off, you take it at face value, it's a nightclub. With a band so exhausted they can barely finish a song before passing out and sleeping on the stage. And secondly, it's clearly mobbed up. It's a pizzeria slash child casino. Now, a lot of people don't believe me when I say this. They say Chuck E. Cheese doesn't sound like he has a lot of mob ties, but don't let his Americanized name fool you. Charles Entertainment Cheese changed his name at Ellis Island. He might not have skeletons in his closet, but Carlo Formaggio sure does. I think the most upsetting thing about Chuck E. Cheese has to be when you walk around, there's all these pictures on the wall, and it's like Chuck and his friends inserted into moments of 20th century pop iconography. So it'd be like Chuck E. Cheese hanging out with Frank Sinatra and Sammy Davis Jr. Or Chuck E. Cheese pushing down his skirt like he's Marilyn Monroe. Or Chuck E. Cheese is Che Guevara. Or Chuck E. Cheese evacuating Saigon like he's, like he's the Forrest Gump of pizza mascots. And I'm standing in this hallway looking at all these pictures and I'm forming my own in my head like, like at the end of Usual Suspects where I'm like, wait a minute. Mafia, Frank Sinatra, Marilyn Monroe, Cuba, Vietnam. Oh my God, Chuck E. Cheese killed Kennedy! 
Oh, he's been hiding in plain sight all these years, and he's never told anyone. Why? Because he's a mouse, not a rat. That is my how-to guide of how to get kicked out of Chuck E. Cheese. That's... They don't let adults in there by themselves. You just wander into the ball pit screaming, Wake up, sheeple! Uh, despite, my, despite my inflammatory views on Chuck E. Cheese, uh, I am engaged. I'm engaged to be married, uh, which... Hold, hold on, though. No. <laughs> like, I, I've been with my fiancé for five years now. I still go through that relationship every moment feeling like I'm only there through trickery and deceit. Like, every time I'm with my fiancé, I'm just like, oh, she's going to be mad when she finds out I'm me. Like, I'm just happy to not be dating anymore. I don't, I don't like, enjoy dating. It's not fun for me. Like, you go on dates, what you ask like, the same questions over and over and over again. It's, like, really frustrating to me. Just like, oh, what's your dog's favorite song? Just, like, dumb stuff like that. When I was dating, what I would do is I would ask really uncomfortable questions on a date and, and treat a date as if it were a rodeo. You know, see how long it takes me to get bucked off after I say something like, <laughs> that's really interesting. What kind of smells remind you of your dad? <laughs> I would also invent false facts and plant those into conversation just to see if I could get away with them. Just like small things just like, hey, did you know Shakespeare had hooks for hands? Like things I think... I can get away with. Because here's what I love about that. If a date goes well, you can own up to any lie that you tell. But if a date does not go well, you can keep that information to yourself, and you have possibly ruined so many future dates for that other person. Because, like, they're going to repeat that, and it's going to circulate like a virus. And one of my goals in life is to be in a town I've never been before and be approached by a complete stranger who will say something to me like, Hey, did you know the actor Willem Dafoe is just two goats standing really close to each other? Those are my goals in life. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm, I'm, I'm planning... A life with someone. I'm very excited about it. I started wearing this ring not terribly long ago, kind of like a good faith gesture of being in a committed relationship. But I have all these cynical friends who would say things like, Nick, that ring is only going to make women hit on you more. And I disagree because I, I am not exactly home wrecker material. Like, no one sees me in a bar and just thinks, mmm, I bet he makes love the way he dances. Sitting down. Like, I don't know, I like to be comfortable. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to plan for a better life. I got a targeted Facebook ad recently, targeted for me, uh, advertising like an estate service, which it's like really weird when Facebook's like, you're gonna die, but like, uh, I, I, I love it because Facebook seems to be, despite knowing everything about my life, Facebook seems to be under the impression that I have any assets to bequeath, which is completely wrong. I'm a millennial who works with children. I don't even have a savings account. Like, My will reading would be so depressing, just a lawyer standing in front of my bereaved, just like, to my family, I leave any photos they may want of me. To my roommate, I still have a roommate. To my roommate, I leave my exotic collection of unpaid parking tickets. And to my dearly beloved wife, I leave my large plastic bag filled with smaller plastic bags. The things you cherish. I don't know. I, I, th worrying about the future keeps me up at night. Like I, I suffer from insomnia, and the way it acts up is that every night when my head hits the pillow, that's the moment that my brain doesn't shut up about anything that's ever happened in my entire life. Like, I remember these things from my past that are so embarrassing and shameful that I actually wince remembering them. It's terrible. Like, every night, all of those events get together and compete in prize fights in my brain. Like, every evening is just, in this corner! person I listen to the Beach Boys today like that's not a, I live now that's not a good look
I didn't listen to the Beach Boys when I was younger, uh, cause like every one of their songs just sounded like super lame and innocent and wholesome sounding. Like they all just sounded like, we're gonna drive to the school and sign up for the draft. Like it was just baby boomer nonsense. I didn't get it. I got older, my opinion changed cause I realized they are kind of like a dark, weird, twisted band because what are they? But five older men. Unhealthy obsessions with high school girls. I mean, it's gross. It's really, it's, you can't hear it at home, but the entire studio just went quiet. It's it's because everyone in this room knows in their hearts that like half the Beach Boy songs are just things like, well, she's just 14 and her daddy doesn't know she's with me. Don't tell her dad. Don't. Oh, you're gonna walk by, that's okay. I wouldn't sleep with you anyway. Like, it's like, pump the brakes, Roy. She's trying to go to work. I don't know. My, my life is uh, just all of these awful, weird moments just stacked back to back. Like, I, I, I got a messy roommate. I got a messy roommate, and he never cleans our French press when he's done with it, our coffee press, which, if you look at me, makes sense. Uh, he never cleans it, and I hate it so much, but I've like never confronted him about this. Instead, every day I look at that French press, I do this thing where I have a hushed, under the breath, one-sided argument as if he was in the room with me. Like, I practice for fights I really want to have one day. You know, it always starts off the same. I'm always fuming, huffing and puffing in a corner. It's like, ugh. Oh. Oh, you could just clean it every once in a while. It takes 44. No, no, no. No, I get it. You've got things to do. You've got to go plant a tree or go dumpster diving. But, like, by the end of it, I have just transformed into a full blown southern lawyer at the end of a courtroom drama. I'm just stomping around my kitchen screaming, Ladies and gentlemen, I'm just a simple man. I'm just like you. Every day I get up, I put my pants on one leg at a time, and then I take them off completely when I have to pee, just like you good folk. We're not so different. Now maybe I'm not used to your big city ways. I was born a poor country boy, the oldest of 40 children. My father worked <laughs> grueling hours. Long, grueling hours in the tobacco mines. And I might not know a lot of things in this world. I might not know how to read an analog clock. I might not know where the clitoris is or what it makes. But I know one thing for sure, ladies and gentlemen. I know that my forefathers, I had a very progressive family. My forefathers would not want me to grow up in a country where a French press can go unlaved, unscrubbed, unscoured. And if you have any kindness in your souls, I beg you, beseech you, implore you, to convict this man on these grounds. These grounds which are still in the French press. Arrest my case. Good night. And then I realized that doing that takes longer than it does to clean the French press. So I'm at a loss. Hey, thank you guys so much. My name is Nick Ortolani. Please remember to donate money to Somerville Media Center. And enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you.